Carlos Silva Jr., sports editor, the Lubbock Avalanche Journal in Lawrence, Kansas last night for that epic game double overtime. KU ends up on top, but my goodness, what a game. Carlos, what was it like to be uh, at, at Allen Fieldhouse? I mean, you talk about an atmosphere that is kind of unbelievable. I mean, I, I know a lot of people use that term a lot. Smokey, but man, that was something else. I mean, it's you, you talk about game of the year type atmosphere, that was certainly it. Not only that, but then when you take into account the game that happened the night before with Kansas City and uh, Buffalo, I mean, it, it, it mimicked it. And uh, Ochai mentioned that as well, is that they were just trying to play with uh, kind of really – really that type of we have to do whatever it takes to win and certainly both teams are able to do that and it's fun just to watch two teams that are playing at such a high level and and, and I mean you, you look at Bryson Williams and Ochai as well it was just uh, something something to behold. Yeah, it, and as sports fans, to see what we saw Saturday, the NFL, and then, of course, as you mentioned, the stuff Sunday was epic, and then last night with double overtime. Did Texas Tech, not that they needed this, everyone knows how good they are. The wins against Kansas, the win at Baylor, they're a battering ram. They bring waves of talent at you every single, every time they substitute. Did they actually gain even more uh, respect from last night, even in a loss? I, I want to say, I think just from the national perspective, I think there's a little bit more respect that's gained there. I think everyone that's in the Big 12 knows everyone is good in the Big 12. You look at Kansas State, yes, they did lose to Kansas over the weekend, but when you're up 17 on Kansas, you're a pretty darn good team. And you look at what Kansas State was having to do, Bruce Weber was out, several, several of their players were out, and now that they're at full strength, you kind of see what type of team they are. Now Texas Tech, despite having all their – problems with either health and safety protocol, Terrence Shannon being out of the lineup, Kevin McCuller being out of the lineup. Now they're trying to just figure out the rotation because they're, for lack of a better term, about as healthy as they've been so far this season, and now they're just trying to figure out, okay, what what rotation works, what five guys work, who's our stopper, who's our go-to scorer, and just kind of all those things. And I think that's the one thing you can take away if you're Mark Adams is, you know, you've got a group of fighters, you can work with that, and now you just have to figure out the key combinations that are going to help you down the stretch and obviously making a deep run in, into the NCAA tournament. I thought McCuller at Baylor, well, he hit a couple of huge shots in that game that was the win on the road. We know Shannon came back, and I know the alley-oop that those two had a week ago. They didn't They didn't shoot it well last night, two for 21, I think, combined. Is that just trying to still get back in a rhythm? Uh, a little bit for Terrence Shannon. I'll be honest, I, I was kind of shocked he was taking some of those threes early in the shot clock. I think that's something that you have a good game from the three-point line and maybe you got to get a heat check at some point. Because, and, and I asked Mark about this after the game, about that shot right before, uh, I want to say after uh, Ochai made that three to force the second overtime and Shannon goes all the way down, takes a three with about, I want to say, three or four seconds left on the clock. He, he just and, and I asked him, should Shannon have driven the ball, see if he can get a foul later on? And Mark was pretty honest in saying, like, sometimes when you're on the road, you just got to take a shot that you feel like you feel good about and you don't want to kind of put it in, in into the referee's hand, so to speak. So, I mean, again, I, I think that would be the biggest thing to take away is I think Taron Shannon is still trying to find his rhythm in his offense. I think when he is most dangerous, he is an aggressive, physical player that drives to the basket, gets his – gets his shooting stroke ready by making three throws, and then from there he's able to get a little bit of extra space at the three-point line, and that's when he's able to get those open shots. But some of those step-back threes, I know he's worked on them. I know he's talked about it, but sometimes you just know i got to take these threes, or sometimes you, you got to know, okay, let's uh, give it to the guy that's got 33 points right now, or sometimes you got to just look for someone that is hot. They did that early. A lot of the teammates did for Bryson Williams when they realized how good he was. And uh, unfortunately, it's just like one of those things. Like you said, Smokey, sometimes you just have an off night and you just got to find other guys and find other ways to win. And Kevin McCuller and Terrence Shannon certainly did. Because if you think about it, yes, you may look at the statistic line, but Terrence Shannon hit two big free throws, four seconds left to force overtime. So. They played Kansas twice. They played at Baylor. They had the game at Kansas State. Is this as tough a stretch as you might get even in the NCAA tournament? You could make that argument for every team in the Big 12. I mean, mm -hmm. you look at some of the projections with Joe, Joe Lenardi, and he's seven to eight teams in the in the NCAA tournament just based on the type of schedule that you've had to play, whether that's the net or whatever statistical uh, 
I guess, uh, website or Torvik or kind of all those things, kind of how those measurements work, they're, they're just unbelievable in the Big 12. So I think any stretch you have in the Big 12 is going to prepare you for the NCAA tournament. But you have to look at what Texas Tech has done, and you have to look at it on a game-by-game basis. What did they do in these games that allowed them to learn and get better? In the Baylor game, as you guys well know, they learned that Davian Warren – was a warrior at the, at, the, at the line, made a couple free throws, and not only that, but you can close out games. And here's the other thing. I know it's a loss, and I'm sure Tech fans are going to be upset about it, but when you look at the fact that they were down 12 with about six and a half minutes left, and they tied it to 75 on the road at Fog Allen, where it is difficult to even get out of that type of hole, that is an impressive feat for a Texas Tech team that – and even any team that goes to Fog Allen, where you're down 12, that could get into bad territory pretty soon. So just, so just the fact that they showed that medal in that fight, I think really, really pleased Mark Adams after the game. Uh, Bryson Williams. Oh, my Lord. Um, Agbaji, you mentioned him in 37 or 9. He was monstrous and hit the huge shots. Mm-hmm. But Bryson Williams... He loves playing against Kansas because he did even before he was at Tech. How much, not a surprise, but how much better or more productive has he been than even perhaps Mark Adams and company expected? I think they expected him to be productive, Smokey, but I think the other thing, too, is when you talk about the Kansas thing, he's averaging 26 points a game when he plays Kansas. So so he's not too bad when he does play the Jayhawks. But I think the most important thing, and I think it's something people don't realize, is Mark had mentioned they're better when Bryson Williams is making shots. So they tailored the offense to get him the ball more and I think you're seeing the confidence build and that was a slow progression like I said if you look game by game during that brutal stretch where they played five five games in 10 days or if you want to look at the four games in eight days or seven days or whatever you want to look at they learn some things and the biggest thing is Bryson Williams steps up when the competition gets big and the and the competition doesn't get any better than the big 12 and all of a sudden when you give them the ball and you give them that confidence which is what they've been doing the last couple games you see him step up. Same thing with Kevin O'Banner. He may not be making the threes like he was last year, but he is stepping up in terms of offensive rebounds, getting those rebounds just on the defensive end, and he's, he's finding other ways to help the team, which is something I think Terrence Shannon and Kevin McCullough are going to start doing uh, later on, whether it's at Mississippi State or down the line. I think that's something they have to figure out is if we're not – being productive from an offensive perspective. How do we help on the defensive end? How do we help rebounding? How do we help assist-wise? I think that's going to be the biggest trick for Texas Tech is because you've got four really good scores in McCuller, Shannon, O'Banner, and Williams who can hurt you either from the three-point line, can hurt you from inside. And I think that's something that the is going to have to figure out is how do you get those guys all going at once, but the crazy part is right now, Smokey, they still have plenty of time to figure that out. We've heard the story about the ticket code in Austin, but a week from today in Lubbock, can they contain the excitement building for that in Lubbock with Texas and Texas Tech next Tuesday? I think the best way to put this is pandemonium because I don't know what's going to happen next week. I mean, obviously there's a little bit of ill will, and I think that's really the understatement of the year towards Chris Beard when he goes from – Texas Tech to rival Texas, and certainly the way that Texas has been playing, obviously the Texas Tech fans have been paying very close attention to how the Longhorns have been doing, so I think just in that aspect, it's gone from a rivalry to a little bit higher of a level to something else, because it's personal, and I think that's going to be the most important thing, is how this team plays, and it's going to be interesting to see, because I can't remember the last time Texas Tech scored 91 points in a game because that's just the way that Chris Beard wanted to play his motion offense, and certainly Mark Adams, that was the one thing he wanted to emphasize when he took the job, was he wanted to be more up-tempo. He wanted to make sure they had to outscore a team. Granted, he doesn't want to most of the time because he's a defensive guy, but if they have to, they have to, and they certainly showed that yesterday, and I think that's something that is going to be interesting to see on how the Longhorns are going to be able to slow down Texas Tech and their offense, but just from a outside perspective, looking at how this is just going to be looked at from the national media, it's going to be Mark Adams versus Chris Beard, yes, because of obviously all the storylines. You can look it up if you'd like, but at the end of the day, you're going to have players playing players, and I think right now Texas Tech is really playing its best basketball, but the but the other thing, too, is you don't want to peak right now, and I think that's something Mark is looking for is he's making sure, okay, 
what do we have to work on to make sure that we're not peaking right now, but we're slowly having that, that, that slow climb right before the NCAA tournament starts. Carlos, thank you, man. Appreciate you sharing the uh, atmosphere at that fog and Allen Fieldhouse. And what a game. And there are games like that basically nightly whenever anyone's playing in the Big 12. Carlos Silva, Jr., sports editor, Lubbock Avalanche Journal, Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports. And as we said right before the, the interview with Carlos, we will update you on occasion on the Baseball Hall.